Nine lakes that are dying up. Number one, Lake Pupo, was a large saline lake in a shallow depression in the Altiplano Mountains in Aurora, Bolivia, at an altitude of approximately 3,700 meters. Because the lake was long and wide, it made up the eastern half of the department, known as a mining region in southwest Bolivia. The permanent part of the lake body covered approximately 1,000 square kilometers, and it was the second largest lake in the country. The lake received most of its water from the Desaguadero River, which flows from Lake Titicaca at the north end of the Altiplano. Since the lake lacked any major outlet and had a mean depth of less than 3 meters. By December 2015, the lake had completely dried up, leaving only a few marshy areas, and massive dying off of local animal life. The death toll among fish has been estimated in the millions. An additional 500 or so birds, including flamingos and ducks, also died off. Although the lake has dried up completely twice in the past, it does not appear that it will recover this time. Suggested causes of the decline are the melting of the Andes glaciers and loss of their waters because of a drought due to climate change, as well as continued diversion of water for mining and agriculture. Number 2, Lake Eyre, is a great salt lake in central South Australia, with a total area of 4,281 square miles. Lake Eyre is normally dry, it fills completely only an average of twice in a century, but partial, minor fillings happen much more often. When completely filled, the lake takes about two years to dry up again. Lake Eyre is in a region of very low and intermittent rainfall, amounting to less than 5 inches annually. The lake is fed by a vast internal continental drainage basin, but evaporation rates in the region are so high that most of the rivers in the basin dry up before reaching the lake. The waters of the Diamantina and other rivers can feed the lake only when they are in flood after heavy rains. The salinity in the lake increases as the 450 mm salt crust dissolves over a period of 6 months of a major flood, resulting in a massive fish kill. When over 4 meters deep, the lake is no saltier than the sea, but salinity increases as the water evaporates, with saturation occurring at about a 500 mm depth. The lake takes on a pink hue when saturated, due to the presence of beta-carotene pigment, caused by the alga Tenalial salina. Number 3, the Aral Sea, was an endorheic lake lying between Kazakhstan in the north and Uzbekistan in the south, which began shrinking in the 1960s, and had largely dried up by the 2010s. The name roughly translates as Sea of Islands, referring to over 1,100 islands that had dotted its waters. Formerly the fourth largest lake in the world with an area of 68,000 kilometers, the Aral Sea began shrinking in the 1960s, after the rivers that fed it were diverted by Soviet irrigation projects. By 1997, it had declined to 10% of its original size, splitting into four lakes. The North Aral Sea, the eastern and western basins of the once far larger South Aral Sea, and the smaller intermediate Barscombs Lake. By 2009, the southeastern lake had disappeared, and the southwestern lake had retreated to a thin strip at the western edge of the former southern sea. In subsequent years occasional water flows have led to the southeastern lake sometimes being replenished to a small degree. Satellite images by NASA in August 2014, revealed that for the first time in modern history, the eastern basin of the Aral Sea had completely dried up. Former United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, called the shrinking of the Aral Sea, one of the planet's worst environmental disasters. Number 4, Lake Urmia, is an endorheic salt lake in Iran. The lake is located between the provinces of east and western Azerbaijan in Iran, and west of the southern portion of the Caspian Sea. At its greatest extent, it was the largest lake in the Middle East, and the sixth largest saltwater lake on Earth, with a surface area of approximately 5,200 km square, a length of 140 km, a width of 55 km, and a maximum depth of 16 meters. By late 2017, the lake had shrunk to 10% of its former size, due to persistent general drought in Iran, but also the damming of the local rivers that flow into it, and the pumping of groundwater from the surrounding area. This dry spell was broken in 2019. The warning comes just four years after a Japanese government-funded program had raised hopes of stability in what was once the Middle East's largest lake, and turning around one of the worst ecological disasters of recent decades. Lake Urmia, along with its approximately 102 islands, is protected as a national park by the Iranian Department of Environment. Number 5, the Great Salt Lake is the largest saltwater lake in the Western Hemisphere, and the eighth largest terminal lake in the world. It lies in the northern part of the U.S. state of Utah, and has a substantial impact on the local climate, particularly through lake effect snow. One of the biggest worries is that the Great Salt Lake will go the way others have gone before it, not just drying up and ceasing to be a source of water, but becoming a source of poison. Biologist Bonnie Baxter says more than 40% of the lake bed is no longer covered by water, and could turn to dust. Since 1847, the Great Salt Lake has steadily shrunk, reaching its lowest recorded level in 2016. Today, the lake is 3.6 meters below its 1847 level, and just half its original volume. Previously, many researchers thought the decline here and in other saltwater lakes, was caused by wet and dry cycles related to climate change. 
The lake's three major tributaries, the Jordan, Weber, and Bear Rivers, together deposit around 1.1 million tons of minerals in the lake per year. Since the lake has no outlet besides evaporation, these minerals accumulate and give the lake high salinity and density. This density causes swimming in the lake to feel similar to floating. The lake has been called America's Dead Sea and provides a habitat for millions of native birds, brine shrimp, shorebirds, and waterfowl, including the largest staging population of Wilson's Fallerp in the world. Number 6, the Dead Sea, is a landlocked salt lake, is located between Jordan, the occupied Palestinian territories, and Israel. The Dead Sea has been dropping one meter each year, causing sinkholes and other major problems for the agricultural sector. The lake's surface is 430 below sea level, making its shores the lowest land-based elevation on Earth. It is 304 meters deep, the deepest hypersaline lake in the world, with a salinity of 34%. It is one of the world's saltiest bodies of water 9.6 times as salty as the ocean, and has a density of 1.24 kilograms per liter. This salinity makes for a harsh environment in which plants and animals cannot flourish. The Dead Sea's main, northern basin, is 50 kilometers long and 15 kilometers wide at its widest point. The Dead Sea is receding at a swift rate, the surface area today is 605 km square, having been 1,050 km square in 1930. The recession of the Dead Sea has begun causing problems, and multiple canals and pipeline proposals, such as the scrapped Red Sea Dead Sea Water Conveyance Project, have been made to reduce its recession. Number 7, Sultan Sea. The Sultan Sea is a shallow, landlocked, highly saline body of water in Riverside and Imperial Counties, at the southern end of the U.S. state of California. It lies on the San Andres Fault within the Salton Trough that stretches to the Gulf of California in Mexico. The Salton Sea, which lies roughly in the middle of the massive geologic low point, isn't really a sea, at all. The largest inland lake in California, it's 51 miles long from north to south and 17 miles wide, but gradually shrinking as less and less water flows into it. At one time, it was a thriving entertainment and recreation spot, business that has also largely dried up. It's left behind abandoned buildings and shallow, gray beaches. The highways that ring the lake are traversed now mostly by passing trucks. Over the past few years, companies have been going there to extract a valuable metal, lithium, that the car industry needs, as it shifts to making electric cars. Lithium is the lightest naturally occurring metal element on Earth, and, for that reason among others, it's important for electric car batteries, which must store a lot of electricity in a package that weighs as little as possible. Number 8, Lake Powell, is an artificial reservoir on the Colorado River in Utah and Arizona, United States. Lake Powell is in trouble. Weather, climate change, and low snowpack is all coming together against the lake. Based on the best climate data that's available, it's really unlikely that this reservoir is going to be around in the decades to come. The West's climate change-induced water crisis is now triggering a potential energy crisis for millions of people in the Southwest, who rely on the dam as a power source. Over the past several years, the Glen Canyon Dam has lost about 16% of its capacity to generate power. The water levels at Lake Powell have dropped around 100 feet in the last three years. The federal government which technically owns the hydropower flowing through federally managed dams, sells the electricity to states for what is often far less than the commercial market price. In a worst-case scenario, the Interior Department projects the dam could stop producing power by January. The climate crisis is forcing both federal and state governments to make tough choices and take drastic measures just to keep both power and water flowing to Americans in the Southwest. The Interior Department is expected to make a final decision on how to handle the dire situation at the dam by early May. Number 9, Lake Mead, as a reservoir formed by the Hoover Dam on the Colorado River in the southwestern United States. It is located in the states of Nevada and Arizona, 24 miles east of Las Vegas. It is the largest reservoir in the U.S. in terms of water capacity. The record low water levels are exposing sedimentary rocks that haven't been seen since the 1930s, when the Hoover Dam was built and Lake Mead filled. Among these rocks, researchers with the University of Nevada in Las Vegas found ash deposits from volcanoes in Idaho, Wyoming, and California. The water levels at Lake Mead have visibly fluctuated over the years. Despite the fluctuations, the lake is still one of the largest reservoirs in the United States, with depths surpassing 300 feet. It is the sixth most visited unit of the National Park System and the premier inland water recreation area in the West. Communities across the region are contending with the consequences of less water. Unmanageable wildfires have burned millions of acres of land as crops withered and air quality declined. But mounting concerns about the mega drought seemed to reach a peak in recent months, when its repercussions became startlingly clear at Lake Mead.